this new series of teaching and preaching. Messages from the mountain. Messages from uh, the mountain. God has done extraordinary things on mountaintops. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I think uh, particularly today's sermon uh, yeah, is needed. And sometimes, sometimes we need what we need for God to do is to do again in us yeah. what he did before. Right. Yeah. 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 Did that make any sense to anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, sometimes it just grows stale, the spirituality sometimes. Yeah. And what you need, my homeboy came over here and preached one time, a fresh wind oh. and a fresh fire. All right. yeah. and that's what you need sometimes. Sometimes you need for God to do again in you what he did before. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's that's what kind of what we're gonna talk about a little bit on today. And so today I want to make this this first installment messages from the mountain. Go with me to first Kings chapter 18. I just want to look at one verse. We'll 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 read several, but I just want to for our reading this morning, I just want us to read Verse 21. When you find it, let us stand to our feet for the reading and reverencing of God's word. First Kings. First Kings. First Kings comes before seven kings. Okay? Alright. First Kings chapter 18. And just verse 21. Hear the word of God. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. All right. But if Baal, then follow him. Yeah. And the people answered him, Not a word. You may be seated in the presence of God. <laughs> As we begin this series, of Messages from the Mountain, I want to talk from this subject. Sent to a mountain to decide. Sent to a mountain Come on, preacher. to decide. All right. We'll allow them to come in. Thank God for you all. Or this morning, but sent to a mountain to decide. God, our understanding of Him is that He is the creator and maker of all things. If you want to glimpse into the mind and the creativity of God, look at what he's made. We're baffled when we look out in the universe, but one, one, one need not look far to be amazed at the creativity of God. God, God, he, he created uh, the heavens and the earth, and particularly the earth. The earth was wet. We read the Bible and says the earth was without form. And so, so what we see about God is his ability to create and design things in a manner that's sufficient to him. I, 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 I wish we could buy stuff the way God makes stuff. God, God make things that, that last an eternity. Uh, I, I stuff wear out before the warranty expires. <laughs> or right after the warranty <laughs> expires. But, but he's the creator and, and, and maker of all things. And one of the, the amazing things that God has created was, uh, we benefit from them today, are uh, mountaintops. Wow. 
yes. mountain ranges, those uh, these vast expanses of, of rock and granite were formed out of the mind and out of the will of God. And I, and I believe of all the things that he created, he created the depths, he created the seas, he created the deltas, he, he created all types of forests, all, all valleys, uh, all, all things. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof of all things are made by him. But I believe of all the things that he made, the mountaintops he reserved for himself. All right. He knew there would be times that he would appear to man. There would be times that we, he would manifest himself uh, to man. So he would take what was ordinary, uh, a granite rock, uh, uh, a piece of innate object, uh, uh, object, and make it holy with his appearance. Uh, remember, it was when Moses met him on the mountain. I, I love this about God because if it ain't holy before he get there, mm. it's showing sure us holy after he get there. He told Moses, take off your shoes. I don't know when God inhabited that mountain, but whenever God got there, that mountain became holy, and Moses had to take off his shoes. Oh, he was ordered to. He didn't do it, but he was ordered to take off his shoes because the ground he was standing on was holy ground. On, so, so God, God, I believe of all the things that he made, the mountains he, he made for himself. He knew that that would be time that he would have to declare things to man. He would do it on a mountain top. In fact, one of the first appearing of a mountain is that of, uh, in, the, in the story of Noah's Ark. For the Bible says that, uh, that the ark uh, was set upon a mountain and uh, Moses, uh, not Moses, but Noah was ordered to stay there until the waters receded. It was a mountain top experience where God uh, 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 planted his ark and was ordered to stay there until the conditions for the world were made inhabitable again, occurred on a mountain top. It, it was Mount Moriah, some chapters later, where Abraham was ordered by God to take Isaac there and sacrifice him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, 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 that mystical moment, that, that moment of decision occurred on a mountain. It was Mount Horeb, some of you may refer to it as Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai and Mount Horeb, they the same mountain. Huh? Yeah, the, the, uh, it was on Sinai, or uh, better yet, Mount Horeb. It was on that mountain where God gave the Ten Commandments. It was that on that mountain where God met the children, his children of Israel, his chosen people. They met him there after they made their exodus out of Egypt. So God, God has always uh, used or reserved the mountaintop experience for himself. Yeah. Now, now, for, for our purposes, I want you to think a little bit with me. It, it, when you think about God and his relationship with, with man, he, he gives man his law. Uh, in the book of Exodus. He gives man his, his law. Uh, uh, he, he has desires to have a chosen people and he wanted them to behave a certain way. And so on the mountain, Mount Sinai, he gave them, gave them his law. Which means at that point in time, they were probably, they, they probably were as, as close as they could be to God. How they, God had chosen them. He, he had brought them out of Egypt. He had fed them uh, when they were hungry. Sent bread. They didn't have to go to Kroger. He, he, he let bread fall from the sky. Right. It wasn't an Ozarka truck that showed up. The Bible says water came from a rock. Right. Huh? God, God took care of his people and he spoke to them from that mountain. But here's what bothers me. Here's what bothers me. They, they move, they, they're probably as close to God as they could be, 
But by the time we get to 1 Kings, they're called to another mountain. And they are about as far away from God as they can be. What has happened from the first mountaintop experience to where we are in the text? Well, the truth be told that if you don't stay close to God, how many can testify you will drift away. Yeah. 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 I wish I had some folk that would be yeah. honest. I know you're saved now. I know you're close now. I know you're full of the spirit now. But before God came and before he became real, won't you testify? You will drift. That's why, that's, why they, that's why they say in that song, there's a storm out on the ocean. And what is moving this away? And if your soul is not anchored in Jesus, show up, you will surely drift. <laughs> and so I love this. I love this about God because God, what He did for huh, His people, He'll do the same thing for you. Yeah. Huh? What we need for God to do, here's what we need him to do. We need him to do again what he did before. Huh? Is anybody strong enough in your faith to believe God loves you enough to do it? Because you drifted. Huh? You wouldn't need him to do it again if you didn't drift. Huh? But because you drifted, I need it. Ain't nobody doing this, so I'm going to ask him in my private time, will you do again in me what you did before? <laughs> See, that, that ain't what you come and deal with at the invitation. This is what you deal with at home. Yeah. Huh? Come on, you got to get off that TV. Got that TV. Me too. Because I'm a binge watcher. I love Netflix because they load up a whole bunch of episodes at the same time. Yeah. Sister Nola will tell you, I'll sit there and eat lunch meat and crackers and cheese all day long. Binge watch. <laughs> I ain't the only one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so listen, listen, listen. So, so you got you to you cut that stuff off. You got to get off Facebook. Huh? You gotta get off. And listen, if you don't get Facebook under control, Facebook will, will run your life. Now, it's notifying you about stuff you don't even care about. Hmm? So you, you, you gotta find this time to do self evaluation. You gotta ask God, doing me, huh? David put it this way creating me a clean heart. Huh? Why? Because what, what used to be clean ain't clean no more. <laughs> ah, Priest Nolan, uh, every now and then you need to go before God and tell him, I need you to clean me up. I'm dirty. I know what I used to be, but I'm not that anymore. I need you to deal with my condition. So here's the thing about it. Here's, here's the thing about it. God loves you enough to do it again. Oh, yeah. 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 Look, look, look at our text today. Verse 19. There's a lot of things. You, you got to read verses 1 through 18 this evening when you get home. But a whole lot of things to occur to bring about this reaffirmation that God wants to his people to engage in. Uh, by the time we read in the text, Israel has drifted. Mm -hmm. Huh? They they've called, they've gotten caught up, caught up in the very thing that God told them not to engage in. He says, You shall have no other gods before me. 
And now his people have gotten caught up in the very thing that he prohibited them from being a part of. And so, so, so they drifted. They, 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 they've been around folk who worship gods. They can see. Huh? And that's the, that's the thing it is. That's the, that, that's the issue with God. We were, worship a God that is invisible. Huh? But if you love him and have faith, he'll take that which is invisible and manifest itself in your life. Huh? But, but you got to be patient and you got to trust him that in the fullness of time, in his time, not your time, but in his time, God's going to come through for you. Let me tell you something. When, 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 you, when, when you have start having the problems of life and God is taking his time, won't you start drifting? Huh? I'm telling you, all you got to do is live. But if you live and don't pray, mm -hmm. live and don't draw God into your business, mm -hmm. when that bill come due and you ain't got it, you going to drift. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you don't trust God and pray to him, you'll be doing good in your body one day and you'll wake up feeling funny. You'll go to the doctor and they'll give you some bad news. And if you don't pray, you're going to fall apart. Huh? And guess what? If you get caught up too in your emotions, you're going to drift. I'm telling you. I know what I'm talking about. I see some folk come to church every Sunday and still drift. I see some folk who are revelers at Sunday school. Let the right problem come and they will drift. And it ain't just problems. Come on. That'll make you drip. Come on. Sometimes success Ooh. will make you drip. You'll convince yourself that's your money. That's your talent. That's your gift. Huh? And when you think, start thinking that you can do stuff independent from God, baby, you drift in and don't even know it. Oh, Lord have mercy. Huh? Israel has drifted. God used to be the center of their conversation. Now they talking about Baal. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, the folk that know the Lord, somebody invited them to a meeting. Huh? And it sounded good. That's the way the devil do uh, it sounded good. Sound like it's gonna fix it right now. Huh? And listen, 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 let me tell you something. When, when, when that's one of the tricks of the devil is speed. He can give you stuff in a hurry. Go go on. Go ahead and take your last and buy that scratch off. Watch, watch me come through. Now, let me tell you what I'd rather do with my last. I'd rather sow into somebody that needs something instead of a scratch off. You know what a show up blessing is? When you give to somebody that ain't got. When you give to somebody that you are sowing into your own self. Listen. They, they drifted. And God is seeing it all. Hmm? He, he's watching every little bit of it. To the extent that idol worship has taken a foothold in Israel. God's people. Huh? Mm -hmm. What it is, sisters and brothers, is a few generations later. Huh? Used to be around the dinner table, we used to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. And where he's brought us from. Yes. Huh? But we too busy now giving our kids everything they want. Mm. Huh? The Bible says, spare the rod, spar the child. Somebody made them, I ain't gonna beat them like mama used to beat me. You turned out all right. You ain't a thief. You ain't in prison. Huh? 
you got a car, you got a house. I believe what the word says. The word says if you do it my way, things will work out. But they drifted. They drifted. So if I ain't even, I've been up 20 minutes. They made, made first. Come on. Here, listen. First thing, first thing, first thing I want to examine. Number one, a call to come. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that same call to come is being extended to God's people right now. Amen. The Bible uh, says in verse 19, uh, Elijah told Ahab, and Ahab uh, was the king of Israel who had led God's people into idol worship. He says, sin, Elijah says to him, sin and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Calm. I love this because anytime time you see God uh, calling folk to a mountain, they're about to have a mountaintop experience. experience. Uh, and I love this because the call is to come up. Don't, somebody ain't going to catch it till they get to 35. But the call is to come up, which literally means wherever you are, whatever you caught up in, whatever you disobeyed God in, this is a time to come out of it. It's not a call to go down. It's a call to come up. And that's a word to somebody that's going through somebody, something that don't think you're going to never get better, don't think your condition's going to ever get fixed. God is calling you not to stay in it, but to come up out of it. Uh, it's a call. It's a call to come. I'm raggedy, but I ain't got to stay raggedy. I'm disobedient, mm. but I ain't got to remain disobedient. Mm. Huh? My life is stagnant, and it ain't going nowhere, but it doesn't have to remain stagnant. God can give me a sense of destination right now if I'll just come up. Well, who, who need to come up? Come on. Who is he calling? I, I, I ain't bound down to know idols. Well, yeah. There's some idols. Come on. In our lives. Tell them. Uh, it's some things that an idol. Don't, don't think it's that little shelf on thing, that, that little statue on the wall that you bind down to. Uh, a fat little Buddha sitting there with his <laughs> eyes closed. That, that, that ain't what I'm talking about. An idol is or anything that you cover, anything that you put in place. Of God, wherever God is supposed to be, and you got something else where God is supposed to be, that's an idol. Come on, huh? somebody got their child where God's supposed to be. Somebody got their job where uh, God is supposed to be. Somebody done put their career where God is supposed to be. Somebody done put their husband. Somebody done put their spouse where God is supposed to be. And listen, maybe you have. Maybe, maybe you did let your kids run. But you ain't got to remain that way. Huh? Because God doesn't want anything standing in the way of his relationship yeah. with you. Yeah. And listen, if your kids are in the way, God won't them out the way. And it might hurt your feelings. Those are my kids. But God says, stay in the way. Lord Jesus. They grown mm. and in the way. Huh? God says, anything that's in the way, I want it removed. Mm -hmm. So he, he, call, he, he calls them up. And whoever got something where God is supposed to be, God is calling you. He's calling you to Doing you, he wants to do in you what he did before. Yeah. Not only is there a call to come up, there's a cry to choose. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, 
We're living in a time right now where God is pricking the hearts of his ministers and his people that speak for him. And we're crying out to the world, simply choose. And, and, and here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it. We think that if we don't choose God, we're going to hurt his feelings. Huh? We, we think if we don't choose God, it's taking something away from what he's trying to do. Listen, I love the, 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 the instruction. The Bible says in verse 20, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? Listen, they are literally going nowhere fast. Huh? They're caught between two opinions. Some see salvation in battle. Yeah. Huh? And then some see salvation in the Lord. And, and, and here, all God wants you to do is choose. Huh? Yeah. Listen, listen. And somebody going to think I'm crazy for saying this. But if you're going to hell, Shouldn't you have a good time yeah. on your way? Why would you be, if you if you done made up in your mind that that's where you're going to go or you don't care, why would you go straddle the fence? Sometimes here, sometimes there. God says, I want you to decide. Yeah. Huh? You know why God wants you to decide? He said, because you, you're fooling folk. Oh, yeah. huh? You got folk thinking you trusted in God. All the time. You got folk thinking you turn into the Lord every time something negative. Yeah, you going to see somebody reading your palm. Somebody, somebody telling you what's going to happen in the future. No, sisters and brothers, God wants us to put all of our trust in him. Huh. That was a cry to choose. That was a cry to decide. Yeah, yeah. He calls them to this morning, to, to this mountain to say, hey, listen, you, you can't remain in the middle. And I know in the middle is comfortable. You, you got friends on both sides. Yeah. Huh? And to be in the middle is comfortable. Yeah. Huh? Have you ever found yourself doing them, them Negroes don't know the Lord. You find yourself not saying nothing about the Lord. Huh? Then when you with your holy roller friends, <laughs> that's all y'all talk about. God is good all the time. All the time. Huh? And all the time. God is good. God is good. <laughs> huh? Just in the middle. <laughs> huh? I don't want to feed nobody. But God says, blessed are they who are offended, who allow themselves to become offended because they serve in me. Well, if I close, that cry still rings loud and clear today. That you got to decide. And, and, and it's so clear. If the Bible says, if it be the Lord God, follow him. Mm -hmm. But if it if it's Baal that you choose, mm -hmm. I love it because he ain't being ugly. Mm -hmm. He didn't say go go and follow that so and so. <laughs> he, say that. he said simply, he said, if it's Baal, then follow him. Mm -hmm. Huh? And that's that's the cry to choose. Huh? That's being uh, magnified this morning. That God can handle whatever your choice is. Yes, yes. God says, you're not taking anything away, mm. saying no, 
and you're not adding anything to me saying yes. God says, if I'm just looking for folk, huh, to, or looking for something to praise me, God says, I can take a walk by one of the mountains I made. And God said, them very mountains that I made, they recognize who I am. And because of who I am, even the rocks cry out. <laughs> For me. Yeah. So we're called to choose. We've got to choose. It's more comfortable in the middle. But we're called to choose. But I'll close. We, we see a call to come, a cry to choose. I want to end with closing the competition. God, God wants you to know that that thing that you're putting in its place doesn't compare to who he is. And what he can do. Mm -hmm. Hmm. God, I love this. He he can do anything. But he allow things to compete against him. Yeah. And because, and this is where you gotta be grounded in the Lord, because God allows things to compete against him. You can never ever rationalize that thing. Being greater than God. Huh? Y'all, you got to understand, God will allow uh, things to stand and run alongside of him to give you a choice. But God says, you better be careful how you choose. Huh? Because I can do anything but fail. Well, God looks at his competition. The, the representatives of Baal, number 450. Baal had 450 prophets who rang out his message. And on this particular day on Mount Carmel, God, God had spoke through his man, Elijah. He told Elijah that when, when you get through today, I don't want there to be any doubt in anybody's mind who is the God of Israel. And so the Bible says that Elijah, he gave the whole 400 and 50 prophets of Baal. He gave them first opportunity. The Bible said that they cut up an oxen. Uh -huh, and they laid him on an altar. And the competition went like this. Whichever God answered by fire, he would rule Israel. Uh, and so Elijah stood out of the way uh, and he allowed the prophets of Baal uh, to call on Baal all day long. Uh, uh, is there anybody here uh, that can testify uh, that you can call uh, on some things uh, but only God uh, will hear and answer your cry. The Bible says that the prophets of Baal, 
they filled the trench up with water. Elijah said, that ain't enough water. Go get some more water. They filled the trench up three times and the water was overflowing. Can't you see the water in the trench have cascaded where the altar is? And then the Bible says, Elijah called on the Lord. Is there anybody here ever called on the Lord? Elijah called on the Lord. And God, he answered by fire. The Bible says his fire consumed the altar. And his fire licked up the water in the trench. I, I got to go this morning. But if you were here, God's call and go to the mountain. Do again what you did before. Choose God and God will show up on your mountain. God will show up just like he did. Huh? 
and still have an avenue back to where God is, and He ain't gonna do like us. Uh, where, where you been? I know. His eyes, His arms are wide open, waiting to receive you. So listen, any guilt that you carry, that's you. That's you decide to carry that guilt, huh? Because He says. I will carry that load for you. But you got to give it to him. And you got to trust him that he loves you enough that he wants the very best for you. And so it's on a mountaintop where a decision is made. God shows up and destroys his enemies. Hmm. God wants to destroy that yoke in your life yeah. huh? and replace it with his. I showed you a picture of it once before. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Huh? God, sisters and brothers, is calling you back huh? to do again in you what he did before. Huh? And you're going to be the better for it. Huh? That may be one today that is out of the ark of safety. God says, simply come. My arms are wide open, ready to be your God and for you to be my people. If you don't know him, I tell you how. Romans 10 and 9 says, if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe within thine heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Salvation is yours for the asking. 